Somebody help me say, yeah. Every hour I need thee. Uh, oh, bless me now, my Savior. Uh, yeah, And in the tradition that I grew up in, everybody say, yeah. 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 If you have 1 Corinthians 1, 1 Corinthians 2 and 1, hallelujah, indicate by shouting amen. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Oh my. First Corinthians 4 and 10. We are fools. I don't mean to embarrass anybody. Uh, we are fools for Christ's sake but ye are wise in Christ we are weak but ye are strong ye are honorable but we are despised and finally uh, 1 Corinthians 1 and 18 for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness <laughs> but on us which are saved it is I don't know how much more I can take of this. The power of God and the people of God said amen. amen. I want to derive from the texts read uh, the second verse of the second chapter of First Corinthians. For I am determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him 
crucified. Grab your neighbor by the hand, look them in the eye and say, neighbor, neighbor. That's, it. that's it, that's all. That's, all. Now that, that's our subject, that's our subject tonight. Look at your neighbor on the other side and say, neighbor, neighbor. That's, it. that's it, that's all. Not to ignore the reason for this gathering, but to understand how we all got here. In 2006, the fundamental truths of the Christian faith are under attack. This is, in and of itself, not a new fact, but it is for the fact that those who preach the gospel are holding it in suspicion. Oh my. I don't mean to offend anyone, but may come along with the territory. <laughs> the enemy is after our faith. And let me tell you how he's after our faith. He's after our faith with doubt. Now, that, that's, not, that's not new. Bishop Hawkins says he's ready for the simple, and I'm, I'm right there with you. It is not new, but what we do not understand is that there is the element of doubt that not only blocks what it is God is trying to do for you now, but it cements and blocks you from what God has promised you in your future. Now, let, 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 me, say, let me say it like this. Jesus told the disciples and was very curt, crass, and rude even, when he began to chide them for their unbelief. Because it is very bad to be a non-believing believer. <sighs> Lord, help me. You see, Jesus said it this way. He said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. So it is not in the fact that at one point in your lifetime you believed God. It is in the fact that you continue to believe God that moves you into the place of divine destiny. At any time you begin to doubt, that is when the flow of the work of God comes to a halt. For God cannot move in doubt. He says in Romans, the 14th chapter, that he that eateth and doubteth is damned if he eateth, because anything that comes not of faith is sin. Oh, Lord, you're going to make me work harder than I had planned.